This video is sponsored by the JVOS Mindset. Click the link in the description and get your copy today. Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez. And today I want to discuss something I call details in consciousness. And what does that mean? That means that there are layers of information within any realm of anything, right? So I'm going to explain to you guys how I teach, where I'm teaching from, and kind of the process in which I am presenting my material. So jujitsu has layers of information. It is impossible to learn all of the layers of information in one shot. Most jujitsu teachers focus on the first two layers of information, particularly with beginners. So I'm going to explain to you guys that most instructors view jujitsu through this lens, which I call the standard jujitsu lens. Layer one is a standard path. They give you the, basically the step-by-step -step instructions. You go here, you push down this leg, you step over, you whatever. Just the basic step-by-step. -step. It gives you kind of a visual plan of where we're going. And the second layer are what I call projected battles. Hey, they might do this, they might do that. They might give you a perceived, perceived problems that could occur along this path. The first two layers are, of information are just the beginning. JVOS is a lens that you view jujitsu through which unveils additional layers of information. This is through mindset. So JVOS is a mindset. It's a way of thinking and a way of being taught, which allows you to ask the kinds of questions which will help you gain a deeper understanding of what you are actually trying to do. JVOS doesn't just focus on the how, but it also asks the why. Why are we doing this? The lens of jiu-jitsu through JVOS the first layer is obviously to identify that we are looking at this in a different way, which I call JVOS installation. Layer four, identifying crucial battles. These are the battles that you must win in order to advance or survive, however you want to look at it. The battles that are most important in a jiu-jitsu context. There's a lot of battles out there that are kind of irrelevant. I understand the ones that are truly important. And I teach jiu-jitsu through that lens. Layer five, winning crucial battles. So not only do you have to identify these battles, but you also have to understand how to win them and not just win them, but win them consistently. Layer six, avoiding crucial errors, understanding what errors are going to cause you to regress or uh, potentially be submitted somewhere along the line. Layer seven, optimizing control so every limb and body part has a way to be controlled in an optimized fashion that that what i mean by optimize is low effort high leverage high efficiency and optimizing control whether it's the hand the foot the neck the shoulder the hip there are ways to hold and maneuver and secure body parts which give you the maximum amount of leverage with the least amount of effort and the highest level of efficiency. Layer eight, generating fatigue. A lot of people don't think of it, don't think of jujitsu as I'm going to make my opponent tired. There is a way that you can roll. There are patterns in jujitsu and a way to distribute your weight that will generate fatigue. You're generating fatigue on the opponent. And when the opponent is tired, it's a good way to force them into acceptance, which is basically giving up. And if they're not tired, it is a way to get them to become tired in order for them to make mistakes. It is much more common that you make a mistake when you're tired than when you are fresh. Layer nine is maximizing efficiency, whether it's through movement, whether it's through uh, optimized control, whether it's through timing, maximizing efficiency is is a multifaceted um, concept. So efficiency in your timing, efficiency in your breathing, efficiency in your mental capacity, efficiency in your thinking patterns, in your strategy, maximizing efficiency on all realms. Layer 10 is an unbelievably powerful concept, which is generating behavior. 
Now, behavior can be generated a variety of different ways, whether um, even as simply as suggestiveness, right? So the ability to be, for you to be suggestive will force the opponent to generate a behavior. The way you distribute your weight in a particular direction forces an opponent to behave a particular way. Well, when you understand what buttons to push, there is a timeline of events. When you start to uh, dominate or generate the timeline of events within motion and time, this is an incredibly powerful tool. Sometimes I refer to it as the force. I'm making, I am doing something which makes you do something else, right? So, you know, if you think of Star Wars, this is a kind of like a force concept, the ability to generate behavior unbelievably powerful. These additional layers of information simplify control and allows you to do things with a higher level of efficiency and proficiency. JVOS, think different. Now, again, JVOS is a different way of thinking about jujitsu. If you're interested in these concepts, if you like what I'm saying, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment people, leave them in, in the comment section down below. I will I will read and answer your questions and comments. If you have any suggestions for videos or questions that you might want me to to answer, go ahead and leave those in the comments. Maybe I'll make a video and mention you in a video. My name is Javier Vasquez, and I will see you again real soon. Don't forget smash the like button, subscribe down below, and I will talk to you soon.